Hi, chemistry students. Let's take a look at a temperature dependence uh, type of problem you might see for chemical kinetics. So essentially what you'd be given in this type of, uh, of a situation is you'd be, you'd be asked to find maybe the activation energy uh, given some data that includes the temperature that the reactions were run and the rate constant. Uh, here's a reaction that we're going to be looking at in this particular case, which is the unimolecular unimolecular decomposition of dinitrogen pentoxide and you're told in the problem here that it's first order. The goal? Determine the activation energy for the reaction. So if we go to the Arrhenius equation we can immediately see that if we have a relationship between the rate constant and the activation energy right here. Um, the activation energy is a constant as is R so the only variables we have are temperature and the rate constant itself. And I know that sounds odd to say that the rate constant is a variable. That's because it's a variable that changes with temperature, not with concentrations that are used in a particular reaction at a particular temperature. So this is a constant at a temperature, but if we change the temperature, it changes. Uh, the order of the reaction, on the other hand, is temperature independent and should stay the same for all temperatures under which these are gases. Uh, I'm sure there's situations where that where that changes but for us that'll be good enough. So what we can do is we can take the natural log of both sides of this equation. So we get the natural log of k and then this e to the remember that the natural log undoes that math so I get minus e sub a over r times 1 over t. I've just kind of separated this out for um, for reasons we'll see in a second and then we get the natural log of the pre-exponential constant or this collision frequency whatever this thing's called here and that's just over here. Uh, if you take a look, I've left my um, variables in black font and we can see that we get the natural log of k is our y variable if we put this into a linear format and our 1 over t, our 1 over the temperature, that's not time, it's temperature, 1 over temperature is our x-axis. So this means we could make a graph where the variables natural log of k versus 1 over t were plotted and if we did that the slope would be equal to the activation energy divided by R and of course this is a negative sign. So we take our slope right here of that graph, we rearrange it, we find that the activation energy can be calculated by taking the slope and multiplying by the gas law constant R which is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. Alright, before we get going on analyzing this, a lot of people have questions about how in the world would we even get this kind of information? How do we get a rate constant? Well, it goes like this. Let me change the font so you can see what I wrote. The first thing you do is you run the reaction at any particular temperature and you measure the initial rate. Once you've measured the rate, you can then calculate the rate constant using the rate law because our rate law is rate is equal to k times n205 its first order our k our rate constant is equal to the rate divided by n205 and that's how each one of these would be computed you would first run the reaction at this temperature measure the rate then compute the rate constant all right that under that under the bridge we now have a chance to analyze this data properly so what we need is a y-axis set of data which is natural log of k and an x-axis set of data that's 1 over t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put right here 1 divided by temperature that'll be my I went too far 1 divided by temperature that will be my um, x-axis. Remember Excel likes to put its x-axis in the left hand column and in the right hand column of data it likes to make that the y-axis. So this is going to be the natural log of K right here. So now we can just do these calculations. Um, this would be equal to 1 divided by the temperature. Uh, make sure that you do your temperature in Kelvin. We then drag this down and we get it to recalculate for all six data points. Same thing. This is equal to the natural log of that cell there. We can now click on this and drag it down as well. And we now have two columns of data which represent our uh, represent our data fine. Now, if you notice, we got three significant digits, so we need to convert all these numbers to three significant figures. You can do that here by adjusting 
So this one, these are all the three digits. This is a little bit too many, so we can make that a little bit smaller. Right there, three digits for everything. And just to be clean about it, let's center everything. There you go. So we've got a nice looking data table there. Um, and we're ready to graph this information. So we're gonna make a graph. We're gonna go to the charts area, hit scatter, and voila, we get a very odd looking graph right here, which I'm sure you're not happy to see, but we can make something out of this. First, I'm gonna get rid of this extra little thing here. And I don't like that these numbers are going through the middle. So what's happened is they're at the wrong spot on this axis, vertical axis. We'd like to have those numbers at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna make my minimum value here minus four, all right, so that I make sure that my range is covering all the data points that I have. And that means I'm gonna then put my horizontal crosses also at minus four. And when I do that, my graph becomes nice, much better looking. I can make my graph a little smaller and then center it now we've got a better looking uh, proposition here. Uh, this y, the x-axis doesn't need to be uh, this large uh, and, uh, of a spread, so we can make the minimum there 0, 3. And as you look, uh, I think we've got a pretty good looking graph here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger if I can. Now, the y-axis here is going to be the natural log of k. This axis would be 1 over t. All right, so now we can get a best fit line to this by adding a trend line. Add the trend line in the linear relationship. In the options, we ask for the equation to be displayed on the chart, and voila, we get one right here. So there's our equation for the line. The slope is 1, or 12,376. So that would mean if I want to use this calculation right here, I need to take my, I have to, to calculate that I have to do negative 12,376. I have to multiply that by 8.314. And I have to make sure this is a computation. So I have to tell it to, that it's equal to this result. And I get a very large looking number uh, in joules per Kelvin, or joules per mole. So what I could also do is I could divide this by a thousand and convert it to kilojoules. And I find that my energy of activation or my activation energy is um, 102. Um, 102. So my, my mistake is, is that my slope is actually negative, isn't it? So when I do this calculation, I have to do negative of a negative. Now I'm going to get a positive number. So 102, 103 kilojoules per mole is the activation energy for this particular reaction. And that's all you have to do if you're doing an experiment to find the activation energy.